Hey everybody, so I'm in Pennsylvania today and I'm with my buddy Journey with Jay and we are exploring the abandoned 13 mile stretch of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Closed since 1968, there are two huge tunnels somewhere along this roadway that we're looking for and we're going to get inside. Wow, this is incredible. Hear that echo, Jay? Definitely. This is pretty crazy. So this is called the Rays Hill Tunnel and it's six tenths of a mile. One of the shortest of the seven that are existing in these mountains. So both of these tunnels were built in the late 1800s for the South Pennsylvania Railroad, but they were never used. They were both then adopted for the Pennsylvania Turnpike, which opened around 1940. However, by the late 1950s, congestion had become such a problem that wider tunnels with more lanes were needed. It was found to be more cost effective to simply bypass this 13 mile stretch of the road than making the tunnels wider. That bypass opened to traffic in 1968. Look at this old brick, old whitewashed brick. Beautiful, yeah. All right, we found our first challenge. Not typical, not your average stairs. <laughs> Oh, this is sketchy, dude. Oh, no. All right. Um. <laughs> this is sketchy. All right. I'll catch it if you fall. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was my shadow. <laughs> Dude, my shadow just like... I swear to God, I thought there was a man right there. I'm like, oh, that, that, was, that is filming gold. Made it up. That was really hilarious and really scary. So... Wow. So this pit shows, this is down where we were before. That's a long drop. All right, going higher and higher. Now we're gonna be above, above the tunnel. So I believe these gigantic things are the ventilation for the tunnel. But I think, I think these spun and they sucked the exhaust out of the, uh, out of the tunnel. You can actually see inside here. Look at that. I think that's what it was or what it is. Incredible. Who would have thought that highway tunnels had this much stuff inside? I always just thought they were tunnels, but apparently no, they had offices and rooms and levels. Look, we are on the very, very top. This rounded part here is the very, very top of the tunnel.
Definitely not. Doesn't move at all. Aw, oh, man. That would have been amazing. Like a giant hamster wheel. Yeah. Two dark doorways on either side, and this goes to just a corner. Let's see what it looks like on the left first. Wow, this is weird. Who knows what this was for? Look at this, it just keeps going and going. So, my guess is on the very top of this tunnel there was some sort of track system probably went the entire distance of the tunnel I'm not gonna keep on going because that's really far but that is incredible and you can hear this echo it just goes and goes Wow do you hear how delayed that is watch this This is the top. Now you're on camera, so you better do it right. Thanks. All right. Now we're on the outside. And this is the view. This is pretty high up. Way, way down there. It's where we rode in. That's pretty, pretty shady. <laughs> All right, we're making our way through the first tunnel. It's gonna probably start to get darker and darker in here. All right, it's gotten significantly darker in here now. You can just see Jay up ahead. And the echo is amazing. My brakes are really squeaky on this bike. So listen to the echo that the brakes make. A nice silhouette of him riding out to the other side here. All right, so we just left the first tunnel and now we are making our way, I don't know how far it is, a few miles to the next tunnel. Um, another interesting fact about this area is after its closure, Pennsylvania used this as um, practice area, training, uh, training people how to plow and also uh, testing out different road safety equipment, things like that. Also, in the early 2000s, troops trained here before going to Iraq. All right, so this is what is left of the rest stop. Really, basically nothing. A couple islands, some bigger parking lots, but that's about it. So, moving on to the next tunnel. We made it to the second tunnel. What do you think, Jay? Is it hot enough for you? Definitely. Four and a half miles? 
My butt hurts. Oh. Stairs going up, but there's nothing left. Unless we really want to take a chance. Oh man. And climb the railing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we can get up a different way. On the other side, yeah. All right, I gotta walk this wall. About two feet wide to 10 feet high on one side and about 30 feet on the other. This is how you get in here. It's very much the same. Definitely more water. This one has a ton of water. Mostly due to the fact that the ceiling has huge holes in it. So the water just comes down. These things are rusting to no end here. Incredible. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Balance beam. Side. Whoa. Check this echo out. <laughs> so every once in a while there's a hole you can look down through these, I guess this is where the lights used to be. So this is the actual tunnel. This is where the cars would have been driving. Pretty cool. All right, find out where this goes. This is another access, just like the other tunnel. You can see the curvature that we're above the tunnel. Oh, this is where Stairs have completely given out, so we will not be going down anymore. All right, so Jay was laughing at me before when I got scared of my own shadow. So I'm gonna get him back right now. Watch this. Hey, Jay, yeah. check this out. Where are you at? Yeah, check check this out. What's up? Go go right in there and go to the right. Go inside there. Yeah, yeah, go to the right. It's pretty cool. You see it? Uh -huh. You see it, Jay? What's up? Hey, Jay. Come on, that's not cool. This is for making fun of me because I uh, got scared of my shadow. Uh -huh. I'll see you later, Jay. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm getting out of here. I think Jay's gonna be sticking around for a while, but make sure you follow me on Instagram, Mobile Instinct, and check out Jay's channel, see if he ever gets out. Bye, Jay. Look at this. The 
Better not be any rattlesnakes down here either. Good morning, everybody. And check these things out. This is the Twin Arrows Trading Post that was built in the 1940s and had a good long run, but it's been closed since 1995 and it still sits here on the side of the highway. So I had to check it out. So this is the outside of the cafe and you can actually still see, it says hamburgers. I don't know what that says, it says breakfast. Look at that. Looks like some big rats live in here now. Maybe the same rats that lived here when the place was open. This place is a lot bigger than it looks from outside. So this was a store. This was, you could buy, a, this was a souvenir store. This was a restaurant. Um, I'm not sure what else, but it's got a lot of rooms. It just keeps going and going. This, this was had a shower in it. I'm wondering if this was a hotel room. So they had a couple hotel rooms, I believe, because this would be about that size of an older hotel room. And there's a bathroom in here. Like that was the kitchen area. All right. On to the next place. There's plenty of abandoned places around here. So not far up the road from Twin Arrows sits Two Guns, which was another tourist attraction that is long gone. As you can guess, this was yet another victim of the big highways coming in, took people off of the Route 66 and could not hang on. <laughs> Interesting. Somebody tempted to clean up a little bit and add some nice furniture. <laughs> what a weird place. The original cowboy graphics painted on this Look at this, I don't know who this is supposed to be. Maybe Davy Crockett, but that's pretty awesome. There's more stuff up here. This is that pretty famous building. If you're into abandoned stuff, the camp, the camp building is up here. I've seen this before in pictures and things like that on Instagram.
Now there is an upstairs, but I don't know. I don't know how to get up there. I'm not sure if you can anymore. Let's see. No, there's really no way to get upstairs. Huh. It does have a bit of an upstairs, but I think it's more of a facade than anything. I can't figure out how to get up there. This is the original pool to the camp camping resort or whatever was here. Look at this incredible graffiti. This stuff is amazing. Look at Mickey Mouse. That is some beautiful work. So at one point, this was all for camping and RVs. You can see rows and rows of these, uh, like these are the RV hookups right here. And there's a ton of them. So basically, if you had a camper or an RV, you could plug in and have power. And it was right in there. I'm not going to touch that because I'm sure there's a bee's nest or something in there. But that's, that's what this area was. So this was like a giant souvenir shop, gas station, campground. Obviously, they had the pool here. Just like many of these other places, once these bigger highways came in, um, they couldn't handle the drop in business, which is really sad because a lot of these places have some amazing character to them. In 1878, a group of Apache raiders attacked and murdered many people from the Navajo encampment nearby. They hid deep down inside this cave. Once the Navajo scouts realized they were in the cave, they set a fire at the entrance, trapping the Apache men inside. The fire ultimately killed 42 Apaches who were trapped in this death cave. So this is really the opening to the cave. And you can actually walk right down in here. And we're going to do it right now. Man, if there is a mountain lion or something living in this cave, I'm going to be really upset. He's going to be pretty upset too, but for different reasons. <laughs> All right, I'm down here. Look at this. Better not be any rattlesnakes down here either. Look at that natural light coming in. I don't even need that light, that flashlight. Look at this. I'm so far down in this cave now. Look at this, they just keep going and going. It's it really narrow. can't even fit down there anymore. It gets too narrow down there.
That is incredible. Just sitting here in the desert, a huge cave. That goes on forever. I didn't want to get lost in there. It's like a maze. Now I know, when I was showing you the caves just a few minutes ago, now I know what that is. That's looking down at the main cave where I was. So that is the Diablo Cave, or whatever they call it. And that is where those Native, Native Americans were killed. And here it sits on a piece of property abandoned in the middle of nowhere, off the highway. And probably most people don't even know that it's here. Wow. So this is what is left of an old zoo, as you can see, mountain lions. That is a very amazing thing to see coming down the highway. And um, I don't know how this worked, but obviously this was the main entrance down here. I'm not sure what possibly could have been in these cages because they are really, really small. I guess that's just the way they did it back then. In fact, if you go back and watch my old LA Zoo, the abandoned LA Zoo video, you'll see how small those cages were back in the 50s and the 60s, which is why they upgraded to the new LA Zoo. I'm curious to find out what other animals they had here. I love these old roadside attractions. Abandoned or still around. Equally amazing. So this bridge was open to the public in 1915 and in 1926 became part of Route 66, which is pretty interesting. And the bridge was recognized as an historic place in 1988. Now it's crazy to think that this was Route 66. Now there are some stories of one business partner murdering another over this bridge, but I'm not sure that's true, but you can definitely look that up online. So this is an entire village way out here in the desert. Look at this, it comes right out to a view. Look at that. It's hard to guess what these were even for. Yeah, that just keeps going and going. I am completely amazed. I have not come across any snakes, like any rattlesnakes or anything out here. Crazy.